Crass Records was synonymous for releasing music by really angry bands, the likes of Crass, obviously, Conflict, Rudimentary Peni, Flux of Pink Indians, who else was there? There was a plethora of artists. Captain Sensible as well, he was on there. He wasn't the angriest, was he? Why was he on Crass Records? One could make a case for the angriest voice to be heard on the label, coming from Rochdalian punk poet Andy T. Maybe his delivery isn't as shouty as Colin Conflict or Nick Pino, but his bleak lyrical content on his 1982 debut, Wary of the Flesh, depicts an eerie vision of war and poverty and having no future. The irritable avant-garde backing sounds add to Andy's pessimistic future in a different way to a punk soundtrack. Andy T's pessimism was so ingrained into his psyche, he thought the world was going to be destroyed by a nuclear war in the mid-80s. He was so miffed it didn't end that he didn't think to plan for any future, and is still amazed that civilization on planet earth is still taking place this is according to the 96 page biography you get free with andy t's second album life at tether's end released on all the mad men records this is the album i'm diving into today as part of my reviewing and ranking my entire cd collection series before we get into it, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. So Life at Tether's End was released in 2012, making me 12 years late to the party. This is Andy's comeback album after a 30 year break since releasing his Crass Records debut in 1982. Surely that's got to be a record for time between the release of an artist's first and second album. Let me know in the comments if anyone else has done this. Maybe we could get Andy a Guinness World Record certificate. The well packaged album is a book that comes with a free CD. That's one thing I always loved about Crass Records releases it's the packaging of the album artwork liner notes lyrics and easter eggs i know this isn't a crash records release but it has that spirit about it the book gives great insight into Andy T on how he became a punk poet, connecting with the big anarcho-punk hitters associated with Crass Records, all set in the backdrop of a northern British town under Thatcher's rule. Life at Tether's End is a mixture of a cappella poems and dub slash post-punk bass-led repetition, whilst Andy performs his spoken word shouts. No avant-garde can be found on this follow-up, although there are quite a few callbacks lyrically to the debut. Musically, bands like Public Image Limited and Joy Division spring to mind. On Vivisection, the band imitate Rage Against the Machine, Zach's vocals wouldn't sound out of place here. The album has a live feel to it, a jam session with Andy T ranting over it. The musicians react to him rather than the other way around. It's repetition in the same vein as rap, but it's post-punk with a northerner speak yelling over it. Andy's delivery is akin to the likes of punk poet king John Cooper Clark. There's just no escaping John's influence in punk poetry. I had to mention him. And Attila the stockbroker, with a pinch of Steve ignorant if he was a northerner. Andy T's subject matter on the album includes fake charitable empathy, the power of language both positive but mainly negative, an uncertain future, not wasting your life in your mother's basement, smoking pot and destroying your brain, animal cruelty and hating a certain punk rock supervillain. Can you guess who? Say the name with me after three. Ready? One, two, three. Margaret Thatcher. Did you get that right? Andy's powerful and well-crafted articulate protest poetry makes up for the limited musical arrangements. The guitar and drums are weak and lacklustre respectively, having to rely on the groovy, funky, catchy bass lines to save the songs. The bass is the hero of the album, excluding Andy, obviously. I really enjoyed a lot of the bass lines on the album, particularly on tracks like Vivisection and The War on Terror. The backing tracks are forgivable when Andy is able to conjure up such emotive imagery through a comprehensive understanding of the English language. He should consider writing fiction because he is so good at painting a powerful scene. He is directing his message and has no qualms in writing as graphically as possible about the suffering in the world. So much so you'd be convinced there is absolutely nothing good in the world. He is almost a victim of his own success because he is that good at his craft. You can't look away from all the nasty elements of the world he conveys so well in his lyrics. It makes you want to turn off and look away. The Animal Cruelty songs are so graphic the album should come with a trigger warning. I never skip tracks during reviews and I found it difficult to face the subject matter in which Andy engages in particularly for the entire duration of a full-length album. There was just no downtime at all. The hardest listen on the album for me was the song Sophie Lancaster. The news story of this tragedy is still raw and time hasn't healed how shocking and vile this attack was. Andy's passionate approach makes you have to face this harsh reality whether you want to or not. Evacuation Innocence is another song I really struggled with because it was something I had no idea existed. I always thought the story behind children getting evacuated during the war was a wholesome one where they were being rescued when in fact many children were abused whilst away from home by their temporary families. I had an unintentionally funny moment reviewing this album when I was thinking to myself, Andy, please can you just rant about something comedic and uplifting? Even if it's just for two minutes so I can have a breather. And with that, a song called Sing a Happy Song came on. 
which Andy has a go at people who wish he would just sing something a bit cheery. It was as if he was yelling at me specifically, like I should take in the seriousness of the world, and I felt guilty for wanting something a bit more light-hearted. I respect that it's his prerogative to talk about serious subject matter that is powerful, but if he could maybe interject one or two lighter rants and songs in a repertoire, I'd prefer it a little bit. Maybe that wouldn't work or take away the message from the rest of the songs if he was to drop a love song in there, or a song about living in a car, or looking at horses from your window and glad you weren't a pony. I would love to know how these songs are conceived. It sounds as though Andy ignores his band and they work around him. This would have made for a better listening experience if the emphasis was intertwining the words and music together, amalgamating more sections within the song, rather than just having one idea repeated throughout. Johnny Rotten used to write around the pistols, maybe Andy T should try that on his next release in 30 years time. Now he's done some albums since this one I think. This is a good album fronted by a talented poet who uses his voice with a great deal of passion and resolve to talk about so many aspects of life people willingly ignore. He succeeds in making the listener think about the state in the world and how truly messed up it is. The problem with this is I don't know when I would ever listen to it. I couldn't put it on at a party. I wouldn't want to listen to it on my own because it'd make me too upset. The best place to appreciate this is live. The energy between the band and crowd would create a more enjoyable atmosphere during the performance where more emphasis is put on the music. That said, I am happy I have a copy of this CD, and Andy T signed mine. He seems like a genuinely lovely bloke from the biography. I just hope he gives his brain a break from all the suffering in the world now and again. With all that said, I have to give this a 6 out of 10. The poems are well conceived, if not too close to the bone, and the bass lines save this musically. To get an 8 and above, I would have wanted more variation and better production in the musical arrangements and a fuller guitar sound and maybe a love song as well. So now it's time to rank Life at Tether's End with the rest of the albums already reviewed in the series. So I'm looking at the top. American Hardcore, AFI, Afro Cluster, Almeida, Adele, All, Christina Aguilera. I'm not putting that above any of those. Um, and then we've got December Underground, Addicts 27. See, I didn't really like that Addicts 27 album, but I think I'd rather put that on at a party. Um, got the punk compilation that was disqualified sing the sorrow oh, do you know what i'm going to put it above the akala album i'm going to put life at tether's end above the akala album even though i wouldn't really put it on at a party i think i'd grab that first if my house was on fire so here's a new rundown of the chart of uh, every cd i own i've reviewed how many i've reviewed 13 now two have been disqualified because they're not real albums so in at number 11 we've got afi with december underground Number 10, we've got The Addicts with 27. Disqualified, we've got a punk rock compilation and you call this Civilization on Pumpkin Records. Number 9, we've got AFI with Sing the Sorrow. Number 8, we've got Carla with Freedom Lasso. Number 7, new entry, Andy T, Life at Tether's End. Number 6, we've got Christina Aguilera, Stripped. Number 5, we've got All, Mass Nerder. Number 4, we've got Adele with 21. Number 3, Almeida with Social Media Circus. Number 2, Afro Cluster with We Don Land. Number one, AFI with the All Hallows EP. And of course, the disqualified punk rock compilation at the top, American Hardcore History of American Punk 1980 to 1986, sitting at the top, but that's disqualified because it's not a real album. Thank you for making it this far into the video. What do you think of Life at Tether's End? Have you heard it? Do you think it's not serious enough? Do you think he needs to put more love songs on? Was I too harsh on the musicality aspect of the CD? If you could like and subscribe and do all that lovely stuff, I would really appreciate it. I love seeing new subscribers. Love getting notified about new subscribers and all that. It's lovely. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for getting this far. See you later.